Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at today seeing this. And for those that are live with us on- online right now, I want to just encourage you. We have live hosts in this moment that are ready to interact with you. You may uh, this morning or uh, whenever you're viewing this have prayer requests, things that you're wondering about, things that, that maybe we can help with, and we want to interact with you. One of the things that, that we say often around Overflow is that we are a talkback kind of church, and so when we engage, when we interact, it makes such a difference. So feel free to drop comments, uh, emojis, whatever that looks like online right now. What a powerful time of worship. You know, the call into God's presence is what makes such a difference in our lives. And we are living in a very different time right now. A a time, obviously, where where things have changed. And and we're looking for where do we go for answers? Where do we turn? What what is life going to look like? And I got to tell you, Jesus has the answers. His word has principles that can teach us, inform us. And and I'm here today to encourage you, to equip you, and empower you to live your faith in Jesus. It's going to be a great, great message today because it's challenged me as well. We're in this series, Things I Wish Jesus Didn't Say. And today we're looking at Ask the Authority. Can you say that with me? Ask the Authority. You know, for many of us, we want to be the authority. We don't want to have to ask the authority. And in fact, sometimes we're not even aware of who is the authority or who's around us. Uh, maybe you've been binge watching some sh- shows these days. Maybe uh, during stay at home orders or, or during uh, you know, some of the other moments where we're just trying to social distance, you found yourself watching more TV than normal. Uh, one of those shows that's a little bit older now, but I believe is still on TV, is Undercover Boss. H- have you seen Undercover Boss? Uh, it, it's fun to watch because you, you have this moment in every episode where the, the president or the CEO or the, the you know, company's director is running things, but has got disguised and entered into the workplace. And, and there's this moment where they've been interacting with all of their employees and they've been talking to them and and the employees often are sharing their stories and 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 sharing kind of the needs they have and the the things going on in their lives and you can kind of see the boss whether it's male or female you you can see it impacting them but but in that moment the employee doesn't know who they are and so they don't realize like to make that change to to actually to to see that difference made you're talking to the right person but they don't know it's the authority They don't know who's actually in charge of the story. I I came across this on social media uh, in this last week as well. There there was uh, somebody, there was a movie. We're going to be looking at prayer today. And there was a movie called Eat, Pray, Love. Some of you may have saw Julia Roberts was in it. And and in this movie, it wasn't a Christian movie, but it was about prayer and travel and and, and all of those kind of things. And, And so it was based on a true story, somewhat true story. And so this Uber driver in another country is giving somebody a lift, if you will. And and they are listening to their story. And and the person in the car, you can see a a picture of her here, uh, you know, is is actually sharing what they're up to. And the the driver looks at them and says, oh, that's, you mean you're doing like what you saw in that movie, Eat, Pray, Love. And her response was priceless. Yeah, just like that movie he had no idea he was, had the person the movie was based on in the car. Are you tracking with me? A few years ago, we were at a big Christian event, and the headliner was somebody I was excited to hear, of, to hear them speak. They, it was a sold-out event, and, and so we had got there, and, and, and Cindy was kind of getting situated, and I was standing against the back wall of this. This is before social distancing, so the place was packed, and, and you had a crowd there, and I'm standing against the back wall, and I feel somebody walk up right next to me. And, and so I casually looked, and it was the person I came to see and hear. I, I was actually right next to them, and, and, and I realized who they were, and I recognized it, and, and, and I did one of these, right, where you go... Kind of like that, like you're trying to play it cool, like you're not awestruck. And and, and in that moment, I'll I'll be honest, I had nothing to say to them. I I was frozen. 
I, I was paralyzed. I didn't have a question to ask, even though I knew who it was. Can you relate to that? That in some way, we serve a God who says, I'm present with you. I'm available all the time. I'm here, and all you need to do is ask. I'm ready to respond. That's what we're looking at today with Ask the Authority. And i got to tell you, during worship, my heart was just being moved by, by a couple of things as we enter into this text. One is God's authority, that he has the answers and he's available. The other is his goodness. God is so good. And Jesus is ready and available for us. And so as we read this text, I hope that you can sense God's goodness and his authority because that's what we're calling on when we pray. That's what makes the difference. So let's go to his word in Matthew 7. We pick up in verse 7, and it says this. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? God bless the reading of his word. In fact, let me pray us into this and ask and seek and knock for God's goodness as we receive this. Jesus, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for your word and your words this morning. And as we ask, as we seek, as we knock, as we trust your goodness and your authority, may you speak and speak clearly because we need you in this season more than ever. Father, thank you for blessing your word. May it fall on ears and hearts that are open and that say yes to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. What is authority? Because, uh, you know, when you think about it, many of us right now are in a time where we don't like the authority in our communities, in our country, or in our lives. I mean, can we just be honest? We're struggling with authority. So what is it? Here, here's a definition of it from the Lexham Theological Word Book. It says, authority re refers to the prerogative to rule or govern others. It has to do with the right to regulate and control the activities of one or more individuals. So authority gives the right or the rule to govern others. God's authority, his reign and rule in the kingdom of God is what we're about and what we believe we need more than political parties, more than we need anything. We need God's reign and rule in his authority. In James 5, verse 16 through 18, we see this amazing passage about prayer because our passage today is, is about the authority of God and his goodness and what happens when we really begin to lean into that and pray. So in James chapter 5, we see this about prayer. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Did you know confession is good for our soul? Confession is good in bringing about healing. We need some healing in our land. Maybe you need some healing in your life. It says, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was as human as we are. Another translation says he was an ordinary man. It, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. What is this saying? Elijah was an ordinary man. He was like you and I, but he understood the power of prayer. He understood the authority of God. He understood the goodness of God. And he relied on God. His prayers were powerful and effective because he went to God and he asked God and told God what, what he needed. You know, there's people throughout church history that have understood the power of prayer. Uh, one of those was a man named John Knox who, who actually prayed and saw nations and communities change. In fact, so much so that the authority of the day, Mary, who was the queen of Scotland, 
She, she was in a position of power and, and authority, and, and yet she feared John Knox. So much so that while she had an army at her disposal, a kingdom at her fingertips that would listen to her voice, listen to what she said about John Knox. She said, I fear John Knox's prayers more than an army of 10,000 men. What does that say to us? She knew John Knox knew the authority of God. And that God, as he asked, as he seeked, as he knocked, was answering John Knox's prayers. I believe in this season, we need to worry less about an elephant or a donkey and more about the lamb. That we need to, again, worry less about an elephant or a donkey and more about the lamb. That we need to worry less about Republican or Democrat and more about Jesus, the Lamb of God, who is in authority. And when we go to him, he's got the answers. This is a call to not just say, hey, you need to pray. It's to understand who you're praying to. That there's power in prayer that God has answers and can do something. And you and I and our community, our church, our country needs Jesus more than ever. Can I get an amen if you're with me right now? Drop that in the comments. Let's, let's celebrate that. The answers aren't going to be found in our political parties or systems. You see, Queen of the, Mary, the Queen of Scotland, recognized that while she had par, a party and, and policy and authority and a kingdom, it wasn't enough in the face of John Knox's prayers. Where are those prayer warriors? Those people that would say, I'm an ordinary person, but I don't have an ordinary God. I'm ordinary, but my God is extraordinary. And when I call on him, he makes the difference. So let's break this down in the first couple of verses there. It said, ask, seek, and knock. So to ask, asking is the action that leads to answers. Asking is the action that leads to answers. And, and, and I told you, I stood at an event next to the person I came to see, and I didn't ask a thing because I was frozen in that moment. Some of you may not feel valuable enough. You may not feel worthy enough. You may not feel like you can ask God anything. And I just want you to know that you are so valuable and so loved that Jesus came and died for you. That you were valuable enough that when he was on that cross, he had you in his eye. And so if he had you in his eye and if he values you that much, you can ask him for whatever is on your heart and whatever you need. Some of you right now need to learn how to ask, how to go to God, not with shame and guilt or, or condemnation, but a conviction that God is in authority. He is good, and he wants you, like any good parent, to come to him and to ask. You know, it's interesting, the the day and age we live in, isn't it? Many, most of us, in fact, maybe you right now are watching or listening to this message on your phone. You know, these things are incredible. And, and the thing about them, it, we live in a day and age where we Google everything. And, and I just wonder how many of us need to ask Google a little less and ask God a whole lot more. How many of us would benefit by putting this thing away and saying, I'm going to quit asking Google everything I'm going to go to God. I'm going to begin asking him because he's the one that answers. Secondly, it says seek. You see, God is always available and he always answers. You may not like the answer, but, but that's part of the process. You know, sometimes God will tell us yes, no, or wait, or he'll say, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. My ways aren't your ways. I've got something better for you. But God always answers. And when we seek him, we need to trust that he's always available. Jeremiah 33, 3 says it this way. Ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets. You do not know about things to come. You see, we're looking at 
a picture that is only what we see and those around us might see. God sees the big picture. And when we go to him and we seek him, he's available, he's ready to answer, and he's got things he wants to reveal to us, secrets that he wants to show us, things that we might not even be asking for, but in the, re the relationship he reveals to us. It is exciting to be a part of that kind of relationship with God. So ask, seek, and what's next? Come on, you can say it. Knock. Ask, seek, knock. Knock means that God's authority anchors our persistence. You see, when I knock on a door, I typically keep knocking till that door opens or until I realize the person isn't home. But again, we know God's always home. And so here's the thing. When we start knocking on a door, many of us continue to knock, waiting for and hoping for the answer we want. That isn't what we want to be open to or available to, though, because God has better gifts to give us. We'll get to that in a minute. When we begin knocking on the door, what we're doing is leaning in to the reality that God's authority has an answer, that God has something to say to us, that he wants to engage with us, that he wants to empower us. And so when we begin knocking, we are anchoring in to God and leaning into him. And it's that that drives our persistence. I have four children, and I got to tell you, they've learned how to be persistent. They flat out can wear me out. I'm not going to use their names because I'll owe them some ice cream. That's the deal in the Bennett home. But my kids, they know how to ask and seek and knock because they've learned over time that if they knock long enough and persist long enough, that one of two things is going to happen. And sometimes they take their chances. One of two things, right? I'm either going to re react and say, hey, uh-uh, you got a timeout, you're not listening, or I'm going to go, you know what, that's actually not a bad idea, I got something better for you. They knock, and they keep knocking. What are some things that, that would help if you realized, realized who you were tied into? My brother, uh, I've mentioned before, is a pastor, but uh, years ago, he was a rock climber. He still rock climbs occasionally, uh, but he was very good. He actually got paid to lead people on trips and did it professionally. And, and as a, a rock climber, he took me out a couple times with him. I don't like heights, but I don't mind it if I'm with somebody I trust. And, and so one of the things that happens is when you get to a rock face, there's typically uh, been marked out for you a path up that rock. Uh, that, in fact, there's anchors that are there, and then you, you tie in with a rope, and you tie in, more importantly, to your harness and to whoever's belaying you. And, and there's a moment where you look at the person belaying you, and they look at you, and, and they say, on belay, meaning they're on and they're ready. And you say, on belay, meaning here we go. I'm, I'm stepping in. I'm trusting you. And, and here's what makes all the difference in the world. It's understanding who you're anchored into, who you're tied into. You see, I don't like heights, but when I understood what I was anchored into and that I was tied into my brother who I trust, I was able to say on belay and I was able to overcome fears and, and go to heights, literally, that I would have not normally gone to. Do you realize in your relationship with Jesus who you're tied into? Do you realize today that, that God is good? In fact, let, let's try this. God is good. Okay, if we were in person, I would hear it. God is good all the time. All the time, right? You are tied in to a God who is good all the time and is available. And that's why we persist in prayer. That's why we come to him. That's why we go to him. It's because God's goodness and generosity is there for us. Let me read to you verse 10 and 11 of our text again. It says this, Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him. You see, God is good and he is generous. God is a good God and he's there and he's generous and he's ready 
When we come to God, it's his goodness that gives us confidence to ask him for whatever we need and then to be open to whatever answer he has. As I mentioned, I'm a parent of four children. And uh, if you've ever had a birthday or a Christmas moment with a young child, they unwrap the box, right? And in my home, it, it, it's always really obvious who does the wrapping. Uh, if I wrap it, it looks like a six-year-old wrapped it. And uh, that's real. Like, that's just kind of my thing. I, I haven't tried to overcome it. You can pray for my, my family and, and me. Maybe I need to grow up. I don't know. But, but it, you're unwrapping the gift. And as a parent, you're watching your child unwrap the gift. And then they get to the box, right? And, and when the, a child is younger, some of you parents have had this moment. I know we've had it where they open it up. And, and in this case, uh, they would find a laptop, a, a laptop that, that, in fact, is, you know, nice and, and, and you know, expensive and, and all of those things. But how many of us have had that moment where that kid is like, mm, box, and they start playing with the box, and they start, if there's bubble wrap, they start popping the bubble wrap, and then, and, and if the dad is like me, they jump in, popping it with them, because that's just fun, and, and there's a little kid inside of me still, and, and so uh, how many of us have had that moment where, where the gift is there, and, and the, they get more fixated on the box and miss the blessing? You, you see, here's what struck me today as I was getting ready and praying for this message. You know, you maybe have heard this analogy before, and maybe you're so fixated on what you want that, that you're missing the gift that God has given you. But let me take this analogy a step further today. You see, in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, there's another translation or or. or angle on this that, that the physician Luke gives us in regards to this prayer. He says this in verse 13. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? You see, we can be so fixated on the present or the box or the packaging that we miss his presence. Presence is greater than presence. Did you see what I did there? That, that it's the presence of God that is greater than the presence that he gives us. Here's what any good child understands or is aware of. In that moment when that gift is given to them, they may be excited about the gift or maybe they got distracted by the packaging, but they know that who gave them that gift is sitting in the room. And they're going to walk over and they're going to say, thank you, mommy. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, auntie. Thank you, uncle, granny, or grandpa. They're going to thank that person because that presence represents the source of what they just received. Are you tracking with me? That in fact, when we go to God as a God who is in authority, who is generous, we realize that it's his presence that matters more than anything. And that is what I believe we need in this season is God's presence. And he is available to you through your phone, your laptop, your iPad, your TV, whatever you're watching or listening to this on right now, God's presence is available. Are you ready to be somebody who says, God, you are in authority and you are good and I'm going to ask and I'm going to seek and I'm going to knock and I'm going to come to you because you're the one that has the answer. So I hope this fires you up today and encourages you because he's available. And I believe as hard as this season is right now in this pandemic and with the political unrest, the economic uncertainty, all of the things that we're facing, Jesus is the answer. And he's available to us right now in this moment. He is the authority. Now, to be interactive and engaging, we did something fun with this message. If you saw it on social media, if you received our email, which, by the way, you can sign up with our hosts to receive emails from Overflow, uh, we would love to have you interact and engage with us. But one of the things we wanted to do today with this message is, is to make it a little bit more interactive than normal. 
a, a question and response time, a Q&R, if you will. And, and so as we do this together, some of you have had an opportunity to submit some questions, or you could do that right now with our live host if you're viewing this live or, or with us live. And, and I want to just take a few minutes to close this message, not as the authority. I want to be clear. God is the authority. He is the one we go to. But I want to respond the best I can because the chances are that, that you've heard about prayer, but my hope is that today's message took it a little bit deeper for you. That it, that it was this reality that now you want to interact with. And so uh, here's a few of the comments and questions that came in. Here, here's the first one. It says, sometimes I don't ask because I feel unworthy. Like I don't deserve what I'm asking for, and yet I'm not worthy without Christ anyway. But the feeling still comes sometimes. Boy, I, I don't know about you, but I, I bet you there's moments, I know I can relate to that and, and others where, you kind of feel like, well, does God really know what I've done? <laughs> like, does God really understand? Like, I, I, it's not just my past, but like, I screwed up yesterday, or I maybe screwed up today. The amazing thing about our God is, His grace covers every sin, every mistake. It is His unmerited favor that allows us to enter into His presence not because we're worthy, but because he's worthy in what he's done for us. And, and so what I would say is for all of us, there are moments where we don't feel worthy, where we don't feel valuable, where we don't feel loved. And, and let me just dig a little deeper into this for a second. There are moments maybe when your earthly father, your earthly family has not demonstrated that unconditional love and that generosity of a good father. And here's what I want to encourage you with. Don't, don't worry about where you're at today. Lean into him and move forward with him. Begin getting to know your identity as a son or daughter and what a good father looks like and does. Because when we begin growing in our understanding of a good heavenly father and, and the identity he's given us as his son or daughter, we can't help but want to run into his presence and ask him for what we need. And let me be clear Ask him for what we need, but be open to what he wants to give you. We serve a God who often upgrades us, who often has more to give us than what we're even asking. And so the feelings, I would say, are normal. Continue to root yourself in the identity that Jesus has given you as his son and as his daughter. And those feelings will begin to go away and fade as you look to him in faith. All right, second one says, I prayed, but God did the opposite of what I asked for. What now? <laughs> right? I love that. What now? Uh, yeah, there are so many times and moments that, that maybe you've been in that situation where you've knocked on a door, and, and the door didn't open, or the door opened, and you were like, whoa, I didn't know that was behind that door, right? Where, where it's answered in a way that is not what we expected. And here's what I think we need to just grow comfortable with. God sees a much bigger picture, and God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. In fact, I love Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord. So as I trust in him, not me, I lean not in my own understanding, it says, but in all my ways I acknowledge him, and he will straighten my path. Here's the thing. In that moment where it feels like it didn't happen the way we wanted it to, we can't see what's 10 steps down the road. We can't see how God might be shaping and bending that path. Romans 8.28 says that all things work for the good of those who love him and have been a called according to his purpose. And so that's what I would say is, yeah, initially it may not have been answered the way you had hoped, but God is still working and he's still shaping your path. And we can trust him and that's really the key. So what now? <laughs> trust him. Trust him, follow him, don't get off his path. That's the real key. God will surprise us, and often it's leading to greater blessing. All right, third one here that, that I see in front of me. Uh, another one was, how do I hear God? I've prayed a long time, but never hear anything. Uh, gulp. <laughs> that is a legit, like, many of us have that concern, right? 
Like we're praying and we know we need to listen, but what does that look like? First off, it's not typically an audible voice. In fact, more times than not, it's a, an, an inner a impression, a, a witness, a thought, a prompting, if you will, that comes from the Holy Spirit, that, that we begin to think th- thoughts that we're like, oh, I didn't even think of that. In fact, in the book of James, it says, ask God for wisdom and he'll give it to us. That's my paraphrase. So, so there's moments where we're praying and we have thoughts and wisdom come that are from him. But, but here's where I would take it further. How do you hear God begin by committing to hearing God through his primary vehicle and way of speaking to us, his word. You see, when we begin getting to know his voice through the word of God, when we begin to know his heart, when we begin committing to spending time in God's word, it changes and transforms our prayer life. In fact, if you're in a dry season right now, which for many of us, this pandemic has created moments of isolation and dryness, you might feel like You're in a wilderness right now. In that wilderness, I want to encourage you to commit to God's word. This is what will feed you and and meet the thirst that you have. This is how you'll begin to hear from God again. And if you can't do it yourself, feed on his word through others. Listen to messages. Listen to other people teaching and preaching the word of God. Uh, And do that here at Overflow but you may need to do that beyond here with other good Bible-believing pastors and churches that begin to, to give you an appetite for God's Word again. Because when we begin to learn and hear from God's Word, it makes such a difference in our lives. Well, I hope this has been helpful today. I love interacting. I love the questions. I love making this real and interactive. And what I want to do right now is bring us to a moment of response Bring us to a moment where we're going to to go to the throne, to go into God's presence in worship. We're we're going to be transitioning into a song called Authority. And in this moment, I want to call on each of us, wherever we're at, as long as we're safe and able, if you're driving, do it in spirit. But I want to encourage you to take a posture of worship in this moment. Not just your heart, but your physical presence to say, I, I want to come into this moment of worship. That might mean if you're at home watching this in bed or on the couch, that you need to stand up with us if you're able. That you say, I want to come into God's presence and I want to worship him. We are going to sing a song called Authority, which reminds us that we're asking the authority And that many of us right now, you don't need another word from another human. You don't need another social media feed. You don't need another news story. You don't need another like on Facebook or Instagram. You need to hear the voice of the Lord right now in this moment. And so I'm going to pray for us. And as I pray, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he is the lamb that came and died and rose again for your sins, not just to forgive you of your past, but to give you a future and to give you life and life to the full. He's available right now. So as we pray, we're going to invite Jesus into our life. We're going to invite him into this moment of being in his presence. And our live hosts, if you're with us live, are available for you. If you want to talk about Jesus, if you want to pray to receive Jesus, they are there for you right now. Let's pray together. Father God, we love you and praise you. You are so good and such a generous God. You gave us the gift of your son, Jesus. And it is amazing to think about what that means. That Jesus, we can be in a relationship with you. That we can ask and seek and knock and trust your good answers and your provision. So Father, in this moment, I just call on you to meet us wherever we're at, for hearts that are dry and feel dead, I pray that you would pour out your presence, that you would bring them alive in you, that they would once again recognize that it isn't the earthly authorities that matter, it's you. Father, we come to you, the authority, and we ask that you would speak into our lives God, we love you, we praise you, and we worship you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship him together.